Welcome to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed, and joining me today is John Mason, a man who wears many hats, but today the hat he's wearing is the event coordinator for the Lord Fairfax Charity Ride, which is a motorcycle ride that will take place in September of 2018 to raise money for four local charities. Welcome, John. Delighted to be here, Katherine. So you, among the many hats that you have worn <laughs> in your long career, right is as the mayor of Fairfax City. Right. And so um, Patriot Harley Davidson is in the city. Right. And one of the marquee events that happens every year in the city of Fairfax is the Ride of the Patriots. Right. So give us a little bit of the background of the genesis of how we arrived at this charity ride with the Lord Fairfax. Well, that's a, that's a great story. Um, I have to go back to the time that I was mayor of the city of Fairfax and uh, 1992, the county was celebrating its 250th anniversary, and so it had the usual sort of events, and uh, Lord and Lady Fairfax, her name is Annabelle, great, great uh, gal, she's a painter, by the way, watercolors. Uh, Lord and Lady Fairfax were the official guests of the county, and so they were put up at the what, nice hotel and all the events went on. But what, what, what did not occur was any kind of a social, uh, uh, well, reception or anything of that sort. So. I did that at, at my house uh, because I was the mayor, I could do that, and invited them. So we got to know the Fairfaxes in 1992. That led to my wife and I and some other folks in the city of Fairfax having uh, visiting in York, England. Now York, England is about two hours fast train ride uh, northeast of London. Great city. I mean, if, if we tend to think something's old if it's 100 years old. <laughs> yeah, it's really old. Visit York. <laughs> the, the Vikings were there long before that. They, they, they were there in the Fust Fair, hundreds, you know. Uh, and then the Romans were there. And so when you go to York, you see the layers and layers of history. They have a museum underground that is like a Disney-esque sort of thing where if we were going together, we'd sit on ro rolling chairs like this, and there would be holes in the, in the ground underneath. It's underground now where the exhibits would be. And then you can go from the uh, underground museum about the Vikings and take the tour of the Roman walls. Right. And they're still there, the Roman walls. So they went through the Roman phase. Then you can visit the, what they call the Minster, which is a cathedral. And York has the second ranking cathedral in, in, in uh, the United Kingdom. And the only other one I think that has an archbishop. And, and the Roman ruins are under, wa the water running under it that were built by the Romans. And then if you wanted something more modern, you could go to the train station and have the, one of the world's finest um, railway museums. And you know, the English were doing rail in about 1830 before yeah, we were. Way and before they, they were. have some of those engines from 1830. Well, that's, that's the sort of historical, uh, the historical <laughs> part. But the connection, to put this together with the Fairfax, is there is a Fairfax house in York, uh, which was a historic house going back to the 1700s or somewhere that was owned by the Fairfax family, uh, an extended portion of the family at some time. Uh, in World War II, it, like many other places like that, deteriorated a great deal. In fact, I think it was a GI, GI movie house or something. And then, like in America, some folks interested in the historic features of York got together and formed what we would call a foundation. I think they call it a trust, and collected the money to put together a restoration of this house. And it is a, 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 what the English mean by a townhouse, you know, a very large, sumptuous place that's your in-town house right. when you're coming from your country house. Right. And so it's been restored beautifully. So uh, it's an absolute gorgeous place to visit. Not a bad place to have a, a, a couple days visit if anyone goes to, goes to York. So the Fairfax connection was with York, and that led to um, some York folks visiting with us. It also led to the notion that in subsequent years, we got to go to the House of Parliament as guests of uh, Lord Fairfax, and uh, that's a real treat. In, in, the in the Parliament, you know, everybody sees that on TV with right. Big Ben, and it, I think they call it the Palace of Westminster. Westminster. Uh, when you, in the main hallway, when you go in, green, green f uh, rug goes to the House of Commons and a red one goes to the House of Lords. It's, it's a tremendous experience to see that uh, in hand. So you come to sort of modern times, or more recent times. Last year, 2017, uh, the county was 275 years old. And so I was asked to sort of help facilitate, because there was nobody in the county that knew the Fairfaxes. So I sort of helped put together the schedule of what they did here last year. And in the course of the coordination between myself and Lord Fairfax, or as I would call him, Nicholas Fairfax, um, he said, John, uh, we, we ought to raise some money for charity or two. 
Mm -hmm. You can pick out the charities. Um, and what he was reminding me of is that several years before that, he was doing a charity ride in Russia. Now, the reason he was doing a charity ride in Russia is because in his uh, uh, workday life, he is a barrister and involved with Russian tanker fleets. So he was doing a charity ride in Russia that goes, that went from Vladivostok. Now, the question for you is, do you know where Vladivostok is? I know it's in Russia. That's about <laughs> all, I implied that. You there know, you go. Well, I have actually, in these conversations, I've asked that question probably of 25 people, not one person, not one American person. Geographically, I would have no idea. It is on the is. east coast of Russia, which puts it on the Pacific coast. Okay. Which means that it's a large port city. So that, um, that motorcycle ride uh, went from Vladivostok to St. Petersburg. Now, most people know where that yeah, is. Yeah, I do know where that the is. The opposite end, yeah. on the western end, near Finland. That's 7,500 miles by motorcycle. And I think it took him six weeks or something. So his comment to me was, well, let's do something about uh, a ride for charity in the uh, Fairfax area. And what I'd like to see if we could do is uh, circumnavigate what was the original Fairfax land grant. And that led us to the, uh, pro the, the property that was initially owned by the Fairfaxes. If that map came up, it would be great. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the easy way to think about the land that, the, that was in that grant was, we all know where the Potomac is. Right. We've seen the big open mouth at the Chesapeake Bay, right? Then it comes, uh, becomes the boundary between Virginia and Maryland, and then through, right, it goes through uh, D.C. where it splits, and then it goes up the Potomac River up to uh, actually West Virginia. Keep in mind, though, in the 1700s, West Virginia was part of Virginia. Virginia. So at the headwaters, common way of measuring boundaries in those days, in the headwaters, where you see on that map where it says Fairfax Stone, there is actually a stone there. I've been there a couple times now. Uh, and that is where the water comes out of the little mountain there and becomes the Great Potomac later on. So that was the northern boundary. Now, if you, if you look back at the map, you'll see the red line that is the Rappahannock River. The Rappahannock doesn't go quite as far. And so you see a straight line there that, that was an azimuth that was shot from actually the Conway River, and it headwaters the Conway River, to the head stone. Now, if you circumnavigate that, uh, you're looking at, now think of it as a pr you're a developer. Right. What would you be able to develop there? Well, what, would, what do you think the, that would be? Well, it turns out to be 5,280,000 acres. 5 million acres, okay. 5 million plus acres. The, I'm, I should have a caveat to that. The original owner of the land grant was the Culpeper family, which you have a name right. just a little Culpeper further out Virginia. here. Yeah. And, and a, 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 a son of the original Lord, Lord uh, Culpeper married a Fairfax. She, he, he, uh, the, she uh, excuse me, he died, that, the son of the original Lord uh, Culper died. So therefore, the wife, uh, the son of that, uh, married a Fairfax. And th thus, thus the Fairfax family, because obviously a woman couldn't own that by herself. Well, of course the not. The husband could, assumed the property. property no, right? no, no. So th the original wording for that property was, the northern, northern neck proprietary, proprietary being a term of what kind of a colony it was. Uh, we refer to it because subsequently it became the Lord Fairfax Grant. Right. R uh, Makes no, it easier. It's yeah. simpler. Yeah, we understand yeah. it too. So, so coming back to the story of the motorcycle ride, let's do a ride around that, circumnavigate that. Thus, uh, the plan that we're working on right now is to do exactly that. And there'll be three options. There'll be sort of a one-day uh, trip to for those who just do it, and, and and I might add in that point, the the Hogs Harley Owners Group at the uh, the Harley Davidson store in Fairfax, they do a hundred rides a year of, right. uh, in the area, Not, typically one-day rides. So they're going to it's an option for just one day, and you'd go out to the Fairfax Stone along the red line there, circumnavigating along the Potomac, and and, and uh, at the Fairfax Stone, and then you'd come back, uh, whatever way you wanted to come back, it would be faster. Or you could option two, which is you uh, f uh, go along that uh, blue line to the Fairfax Stone and stay overnight in somewhere in that area. And the hogs occasionally do that anyway. And they will be camping at uh, 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 Blackwater Falls State Park, which is right nearby there. Then the third one, which is the red line on that map, is the one that for camping out. Now this is for the 
Lord Fairfax and, and the other folks that are with him and any others that might like to take this as a uh, camping ride. And so there will be three places at which we overnight. One will be right near the Fairfax Stone, and you see a little tent there. That's the Blackwater Falls State Park in West Virginia. And then you continue to follow the red line there, and you'll see on top of Skyline Drive, the second little tent there, uh, that is Big Meadows Campground, and you're up at about four, plus 4,000 feet. And then the third stop is go down to what we call Northern Neck, and you'll see a little tent there along the water, and that's Westmoreland State Park, lovely park. The ca cabins up there over, look right over the cliff to the Potomac. It's gorgeous. Beautiful. So that's the, that's the long story about how we got from this ride cranked up, uh, and uh, that's the general plan for what we're doing in September. And that, so, and anybody can sign up, and it seems to me you have a car rally as well, so maybe you're not a motorcycle rider, but right. you can still want to participate. Right. So uh, the, let me first answer the motorcycle question. Sometimes we get the question, is, is it only for Harleys? The answer is no. Right. The, the, the ride is uh, organized by the Harley Owners Group, and, but anybody can join the ride with a, with a motorbike, no, no problem. We can talk in a moment about right. how, sort of how to do that. Uh, with regard to the car rally, I'm, I'm call, I've changed the name just a little bit, now calling it um, a family and friends ride. Okay. Be because I discovered I didn't quite use the right term with the word rally. Okay. When I began talking to some folks about doing a, a rally, it was explained to me that a rally is more typically when uh, cars of a certain vintage or, or, or come together, like on a Sunday, and they're at the coffee shop, and people come to oogle these unique cars. You, you, in the city of Fairfax, we've had that over the years in front of, the, uh, of City Hall. Yes. I think Gary Musson may have been the sort of originator of that. Um, so uh, to make the name a little bit closer to what we uh, will do, uh, we'll call it family and friends. So where you see those three places that people are camping, uh, family and friends may go to those locations. They may stay overnight or they may just have dinner with their, their rider there mm -hmm. and so on. And so there'll be another whole, on our website, there'll be another whole set of instructions for family and friends. Uh, the other practical reason for that is motorcycles on a, on, a, on a ride like this do not go at the speed of a car. They go slower. They do go slower. And when we come back from our break, John, I'm going to have already. you I break already. I'm going to have you go into a little bit more detail about how all of us can get involved with this right. charity ride in September. Look forward to it. Hello, I'm Nicholas Fairfax, the 14th Lord Fairfax of Cameron. Last year, my wife Annabelle and I enjoyed participating in Fairfax County's 275th anniversary celebrations. This year in September, I'll return to Fairfax County to lead a multi-day motorcycle charity ride exploring the boundary of the original Fairfax land grant dating back to 1649. On the 22nd of September, we'll kick off the ride from Patriot Harley-Davidson in the city of Fairfax. There are three ride options available. The first one is a one-day ride with Fairfax Stone in West Virginia and back again. The second, a two-day option with a ride to the Fairfax Stone, an overnight in the area, and return. And the most exciting ride, and the one I'll be leading, is a four-day ride that follows the entire boundary of the original Fairfax land grant, with overnight stays at Blackwater Falls State Park in West Virginia, Big Meadows Campgrounds on Skyline Drive, and at Westmoreland State Park on the Northern Neck. The ride is open to both motorcycles and cars. For further details and registration, and to donate to one of the charities we're supporting, visit our website, lordfairfaxride.org. And I look forward to seeing you in September. Welcome back to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Catherine Reed, and joining me today is John Mason, who is the event coordinator for the upcoming 
Lord Fairfax Charity Ride. Welcome, John. Good to be here. So the ride is going to take place uh, September 22nd through the 25th. That's right. And so give us a little bit of background about who can participate, how you can sure. participate. Sure. Easy. Very easy. Anybody can participate. <laughs> uh, the motorcycle part, that anybody that has a motorcycle and knows how to ride can participate. And the easy way to get associated with that is, is to go to our website, www.lordfairfaxride.org. Um, and there's a lot of the information that I've been talking about today, but there's an also an opportunity to register for the motorcycle or car ride. Uh, I'll explain that in a moment. On the motor, on, on, and each case, in either case, is typical with hog rides, it's a $25 uh, donation. There's an overhead expense to operate right. all of that, so it's only $25. Um, you can also register on, uh, on the spot on September 22 at about 7 to 8 that morning because that's where the ride will start from. So uh, my understanding is a lot of motorcyclists don't make their decision, decision until the last until, minute. Yeah. Well, it's heavily driven by weather. Right. Um, if it were good weather, uh, the hogs uh, estimate we might have at least 1,000 riders. Um, if it's bad weather, you may only have a couple hundred or something like that. But there'll be a good number there uh, to go out on the ride. So um, th on, the, on the other side, for those who'd like to go by car, that's um, also a registration. The registration isn't required, but we'd like people to register. On the website, when you go to register, it'll ask whether you're using a motorcycle or other. Right. And you just click the other that's other than a motorcycle. That way we'll know how many people are also sort of coming to the three camping areas. That would be helpful to know. But on, on the, on, uh, in all cases, the reservations for the lodges that those family and friends might use are uh, they make themselves, and that information is all on the website. The, there's a, the papers that describe all this will be on the website. So we do hope that some family and friends do join the riders because we'll have four riders, what I call offshore. In addition to Lord Fairfax, there'll be a Lady uh, 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 Cecil, and that's of the Cecil family. And if you're Shakespearean, that family goes back to <laughs> Elizabeth the one. Uh, she's a great gal, and, and uh, she just finished a ride from Bangkok to Tbilisi. Got that one? <laughs> Tbilisi. Well, I, Bangkok, I know where it is. Tbilisi, <laughs> Tbilisi not so Tbilisi is in Georgia, and I don't mean the one in America. <laughs> yeah, I the mean one the one on the edge of Russia. <laughs> right. And I think that's near 10,000 yeah. miles. So wow. she's done a lot of this kind of riding for charity. Uh, and then there's a, um, uh, an interesting guy, a little bit older. Uh, he's a Canadian uh, bobsled Olympian, uh, Olympic bobsledder. And uh, he's, I think he rode with uh, Nicholas Fairfax in the, on the Russian ride, and he'll be along. And then another uh, colleague of uh, Lord Fairfax's, who's also in the sort of um, oil business, uh, Nikolai Kolensky. Uh, Ko uh, Kolensky. Not used to reading re really? the <laughs> Russian names. Yeah, really. So all those keep yes. in mind now, they'll be camping out. Right, they're going to be there. The other people day. that are even, if they were even in the motorcycle ride, they'll be lodging in each place. There's some place you could lodge. Right. So what is the model? First of all, let's talk about the four charities and how right. you chose these four charities that will benefit from this fundraising. And right. then let's talk about how the funds will actually be raised. Mm -hmm. Well, first, uh, how uh, fundraising, uh, what chair, why and how we pick the charities. Uh, uh, Lord Fairbanks said, you know, just pick some because I would know better. So I did a little consultation with Mayor Meyer and with uh, Chairman Bulova and so on. To, uh, any thoughts? And the first one, off the top that, that that everybody sort of knew and w felt good about it was the Lamb Center. Yeah. And I think you're probably familiar with the Lamb Center. I've been there myself, I've been very supportive of it. Uh, it's a tremendous, uh, um, there's tremendous work for the homeless and, and sort of that general category with the new facility they have in Fairfax, uh, about a four or five million dollar facility, really wonderful. Um, the second one is a, a one that most people don't know about. It's called the International Sheriff's Lifesaver Program. It is an international program. Their headquarters are down in Hampton Roads area, I think, international headquarters. So I'll just describe uh, it from the Fairfax viewpoint. This, the sheriff of Fairfax County, um, Sheriff Kincaid, a uh, great, great sheriff, really she great is. gal, tremendous guy, gal, excuse me. Um, her officers run this program that allows a safety net for two categories of people who might get lost. One on the uh, youngster uh, level would be typically an aut uh, somebody with autism 
that is, has a parent or caretakers or something of that sort, but for one reason or another gets lost. The other category is my age group, yeah. those who are on the other end of the spectrum and may have uh, failing uh, right. dementia. dementia or yeah. uh, that would lead to confusion. So what the Sheriff's Lifesaver Program does, it allows for the, for the caretakers on, on mm -hmm. either category to buy a, a wristband, and, and I think it's about $300, um, that would then can be activated if the person is lost. So the family calls the sheriff's office, and if they're lost, they activate that. And uh, Fairfax County Sheriffs have a 100% recovery of the ones that are lost. What's important to mention about that is that, that it's not publicly funded. So oh. the, the International Sheriff's Lifesaver Program is the 501c3 charity, and the in this particular case, going to specifically the Fairfax County version of that. So they are dependent on individual donations and grants, correct? That's exactly right. Okay. And, and I don't think they do grants because the category, they, they, do, they only do uh, contributions because okay. the sheriff's office, or the sheriff's version in Fairfax is not itself a standalone charity. Okay. It's part of the international organization. Okay. It's a great idea, though, this idea of servicing people who, for whatever reasons, may get lost and you need a caretaker or a parent to get, get, reel them back in, and 100% recovery is a tremendous score. So that's the second charity. The third one's a little bit different. Uh, it's the, in the College of Science uh, at George Mason on a special research program, and they're doing some marvelous research. Be, be good for your. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Really hook me up. Yeah, I'm I always going to do up. a show on that. They, they, they are doing incredible human-related research in the School of Science. You have to keep in mind that. Um, Essentially, the foundations that support universities are 501c3, mm -hmm. so that is a charity. And the fourth one is the uh, Bethlehem Baptist Church Community Outreach Program uh, in Gum Springs. Uh, that's a, um, a fairly significant poverty area in, in, uh, along the Route 1 corridor in Fairfax County. And this program is designed to do rather similar to the Lamb Center, the kind of outreach in the community that deals with homelessness, homelessness and things of that sort. Um, we were particularly pleased to be able to add like, a little broader breadth across right. the county of the various charities. So those are the four charities, the Lamb Center, the Sheriff's Lifesaver Program, the uh, School of Science uh, Research Program, and the Bethlehem Baptist Church um, Community Support Program. So uh, when you donate, you can donate to any one of those four, or mm -hmm. some of those who have made larger donators, donations divide by four. Lord Fairfax, right. for example, his donation, was, uh, his, his donation went to all four of the charities. Um, and they, the, the donations are direct to the charities. We collect the donations, but they're made out in the name of the charity you're sending it to. So we have no overhead taken out of any of the gifts. Wonderful. Uh, what little expenses we have, we're doing separately. Um, as to fundraising itself, it's a fairly simple process. You can donate to any of those charities on the website, or you can uh, contact me. Okay, okay. <laughs> Get a hold of me at john.mason at fairfax. Uh, CharityRide.org. Charity okay. Right. Because some people do write checks. I, I'm sorry. The, it was LordFairfaxRide.org. LordFairfaxRide.org. Yeah. So, so some people do, still do write checks, and I have a lot of respect yeah. for people who are like, I don't do online donations. Right. So people yeah, can... But you get a little worried sometimes about online donations. Uh, sure. I, I, I will say this. With regard to that, we know exactly what's coming in, uh, 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 if it is the online options, and uh, that will be reported as we go along. Uh, we're also, you know, you can't do this kind of fundraising without some corporate help. So our significant corporate sponsor is um, uh, John Marshall Bank in Reston, and uh, they're helping with a more corporate level. And that's great, right? So, so individuals can participate. Let's, let's say that somebody has a group of employees who Absolutely. want to participate. This Absolutely. is a great bonding experience, right. isn't right. it? It's like get on yep. your motorcycle and yep. let's take a tour. Yep. And it seems to me that you have an awful lot of options. And I am with you on the fact that it's going to be weather dependent, which gives people yep. flexibility. Yep. If you don't want to commit, you right. want to wait and see whether it's going to rain or not, right. that's, that's a possibility. The, that's the norm for bicycling. Right. So, but that shouldn't inhibit your uh, donating. Right. So, so the, the ride itself is really meant to raise yes. uh, up the, the work of these four organizations, Correct. the importance and why Correct. people should want to contribute to exactly. them. Exactly. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And you're sitting in a unique position because you, you know, you've been in this area for a long time doing many things. You've worn many hats <laughs> in your public service in this area. And so I think it's remarkable that you have ended up being the event coordinator for this because you know a lot of the, the people that are on the honorary committee. You know Lord Fairfax himself. You know the people who are within the organizations and you really pulled it all together. Don't you think it's time I stop doing this? <laughs> no, I don't know. What would you do instead? Knit? No, <laughs> oh, I think no, it's no, no. fine. I think it's all good. My wife can crochet. <laughs> and that, there you go. I think the fact that you stay involved and that you're looking for opportunities to make it fun. You know, not all fundraising oh, is fun. This looks like it's particularly a good time. Uh, Lord Fairfax made that point. He said there are two objectives for this ride. The first is to raise for some money for the charities I mentioned. The second is to have fun. Absolutely. It looks like he is, like, committed to... These motorcycle rides, some of these people have taken ten, you know, thousands of miles, yep. and camping out. I got to tell you, my admiration for <laughs> Lord Fairfax has gone up. He's going to actually camp out, not right. do the whole lodge no, thing. No, no, no chicken. <laughs> so, will there be opportunities for people to take like selfies with Lord Fairfax and all the things people like to uh, that's do? That's a good question. I, I, he's used to that. I can tell you that he's been here so many times. And uh, yes. Um, uh, in fact, if you give a thousand dollars, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll uh, help You'll you. You'll arrange that? <laughs> That's not actually a bad idea. It's kind of like, oh, I can arrange it for you and all it takes is this much money. No, I'm I, think we, I know. We're, all, we're only kidding. We want people to give out of the, the goodness of their heart. We're not yep. going to sell access to Lord Fairfax. That no. does not. That'd be gross. That would be not good. But, but just as a reminder, too, that the Patriot Harley Davidson is an important part of Fairfax City. They have been the, the hosting organization for the Ride of the Patriots every yeah. year yeah. on Memorial Day. And, you know, Ride, Ride of the Patriots is actually, the for the, the ones coming from there, uh, is the first phase of uh, Rolling, Rolling Thunder. Thunder. So I know. So Lord Fairfax went with them this year. He, That's amazing. They, they, the, the, the hogs took him on that ride. He came over to go to that ride. I know. And, so, and to me, that is sort of one of the jewels in the crown of Fairfax City. It's six square miles, but exciting yeah. things happen here. Right. So I have to thank you very much for coming My on the pleasure. show. This was, this was, I'm glad that you mentioned it to me the last time that we saw each other and you mentioned this wonderful ride. But I do want people to understand that this is a great way to have some fun in September. September 22nd to the 25th. You can make the decision at the last minute. But decide up front to donate to these four charities. And you can find information at lordfairfaxride.org. And right. this is what you need to know.